See games, only 10 games, all against SEC defense. What does that tell you about your offense? Uh, our offense line is really tough, and I said this in the spring. Uh, when you look at an offensive line that goes through the entire spring without guys missing practice, and uh, we put them in really stressful physical situations, and it gets hot, and they're, they're playing 15 play drives, but they're never ever looking for excuses, and they might be banged up, but they're always finding a way to practice. I'm really excited about an offensive line. I think Coach Atkins has done a really nice job. I think they're uh, becoming very cohesive. I think that they enjoy coming into the building. I think they have a very good like climate and culture in that room, and I'm just really looking forward to seeing what they produce up front. I think they've gotten better in pass protection. I think that we're teaching them some new things. So I'm really fired up. I mean, I've been very, very vocal about the offensive line and where I think that we can go in that, in that with that group. Beamer's obviously very calm and ready for the season. Do you sense the same out of the players? And how do you get them to relax and just enjoy the process and not get bogged down about what other people think they're going to do this year? Uh, it's like you said, you have to be disciplined enough. And we talked from day one, and, and the process is the cliche that you know, Coach Saban uses, which has been really good. But really, a process is just a plan that you lay out and you orchestrate, and you have the discipline and the toughness to do it and repeat it every day. And uh, I think that we've done that, and I think our kids are getting better at that. I think, like Coach says, Luke Day's done a really nice job and his staff training the mind, training the mental stamina to be able to do that. Uh, I just think our kids just have a very good outlook on, on what's going to happen in the future of Gamecock football. They enjoy coming to work. As long as we, you, know, you don't have to be soft and funny just to enjoy coming to work. We're tough, and we do hard things, and we talk about our kids. Like to do really hard things like they do is, is what makes them different. I, I think it's, you're going to be this, you're, they're going to start to see some uh, success because of that, and the more success they see, the more consistency you'll see. So there's there a bunch any, of layers with that question. Right, yeah, absolutely. Is there any quarterback competition <laughs> when practice begins a week from Friday? I, mean, I know Luke is number one, but uh, is, is Jason Brown, anybody else going to push him at all? Uh, Luke is our number one quarterback as we as we start today, and uh, you know, iron sharpens iron. Like, is that tripod? Can can win us games, it's going to be the quarterback. So everybody knows in our room that if you go out and practice and you are uh, consistent and you put the ball and you take care of the ball and you move the ball, and whoever does that the best is going to be our quarterback. Right now, coming out of spring, it's going to be Luke Doty. Uh, Colton, Jason Brown, Connor Jordan, all those guys are going to have a chance to fight and compete. We're going to put them in situations to do that in very hyper-competitive situations, and if they can execute, then they'll get their, their role will continue to grow. Marcus, where is that? What is it? What characteristics do you notice out of you know those guys in the NFL versus Luke, and does he does he possess any of those characteristics thus far in his career? Uh, I mean, he does the characteristic of leadership, uh, being a vocal leader, demanding work ethic, leading through example, toughness. Like he hears all the rumors that we don't have a quarterback, and he's a running quarterback, and you know he can run the ball, but he can't throw it. Like Luke Day or Luke Day, Luke Doty can throw it. He's got a very natural throwing motion. It's beautiful. We're working on some lower body stuff, and we get all that worked out. He's a freshman, so as a, you know, we can't we can't say are the kids going to trust the process and the coaches not. Like we have to go in every single day and work individual and be patient and develop and develop and develop. And look up in a couple of months, days, years, whatever it is, and see what the final product is. I think he has a chance to be an upper echelon player quarterback in the SEC. I think that him and Drew Brees remind me a lot of each other. They're both, I don't call him a midget, but they're both 5'11", 6'0". <laughs> uh, they play with the same kind of base. Uh, again, the throwing motion, if you just look at Luke's throwing motion, it's, 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 it's very, 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 very good. And once we get all the other stuff worked out, uh, I think that you're going to see a guy that continues to grow, but he is a freshman. There's going to be times where we look like the Niners, and there's going to be times that you're scratching your like, what are we doing? But if we're going to ask the players to trust it, we have to trust it, and we are, we're dedicated to doing that. Do you have him watch film of other pro quarterbacks, maybe like Drew Brees? That's just all we do. Every really? cut-up that we do. I mean, all of our, all of our offense, most of our offense is cut-ups of NFL teams, and, and just, you know, we have light cut-ups, meaning that it's like running backs, like we think that you look like this this player, and we make cut-ups, Montero made a cut up where Sean Lloyd can watch whoever he wants. Like what, for me, Luke was like Ryan Tannehill, Drew Brees. Ryan Tannehill six four. Ryan Tannehill played receiver for a year and a half in Texas A&M, right. and was said he couldn't throw the ball. He was more of an athlete. So uh, we watch all those guys how they operate in the pocket, how they extend plays, do things of that nature. But, uh, we rely heavily on the NFL tape for sure. Why is that? Just, just from something. Because uh, like that's stuff. the best. I mean, there's right. nothing better than an NFL quarterback. There's nothing harder in the world than playing quarterback, the quarterback position. So, if you can, watch, if you have access to watching the best people on the planet do it, then why not do it? Who was some here? I was gonna say Luke brought a lot of energy when he came in at the end of the last year. Do you kind of 
do you look, kind of let that energy go? Do you build off it, or do you kind of harness it back in to get the fundamentals? Like that? Uh, we're not going to harness anything. I think his energy is contagious, and the great thing about his energy is it's very positive mm -hmm. in the way that he does things. Uh, he's going to go out there, and he's going to do the hard thing first, and he's going to demand that you do it. Uh, so that's something that not a lot of people can do, especially as freshmen. And uh, we're going to let him just go and let him grow with it. With your receivers, are any of those guys consistently mentioned to you from players from player on practices, guys who stood out? Uh, I mean, I would never. I, I No, no. I, I think they're all a lot better than we give them credit for. We talk about them in the media. And when I got here, people talked about like they were the walking dead. That's not the case, in my opinion. I think. Uh, they're gonna they're going to be able to accomplish what you ask them to do and if you don't ask them to do a lot Then they're not going to do a lot But we're going to put them in situations to have a chance to execute certain routes and certain catches and certain techniques that they've not been able to do thus far and I, I have a lot of confidence. I mean I'm not gonna say every single one of them are ready to go to the NFL But I think we have five to six kids or young men that are, can go out there and execute and be productive in this league is it and easier from for there, you don't know. I mean, there's a lot of people. I look back on Joe Brady, like Clyde edwards helaire Like, there wasn't a lot of people talking about Joe Burrow and Clyde edwards helaire being very good going into 2019. And you got some fresh blood, you got some fresh ideas, and all of a sudden, you got the number one draft pick and a first round draft pick as a running back. So, is it easier for a position group like that that's really trying to find itself and find its footing to have another position group on the offensive side of the ball, like the run game, that's they can kind of help them along, you know, try to carry the team a little bit? Yeah, they just hit it on more. the head right there. Like a freshman quarterback and a group like the receivers is trying to grow and figure out their role. Like, what greater strength than your offensive line is, is above average in this league? And you have really good running backs. And if you can find ways to hand the ball off and move the ball where the quarterback's not having to do it himself and the receivers aren't having to win one on one matchups all the time, and understanding that that run game opens up and makes life easier for the receivers is a huge bonus for everyone. When you talk about pro concepts, how do you strike the balance between what you have time to teach with the 20 hours a week and with kids where you're challenging them but you're not taking it too far? How do you know where the line is? Uh, that's a great – I don't know if anyone knows that answer, uh, but we, we push it. And I know right now, like, we we have a lot of stuff that our kids can go out and play around practice. It's amazing the amount of – offense that our kids can go out there and run. It's amazing that the new kids that are coming in that we've never even met with are out there executing these, these uh, concepts and, and techniques. Uh, we understand you can't take all of them into the season. We have an idea with our installation, like we're going to focus on this, 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 and this. But the great thing is we were able to put so much in early on that if we do need to make an adjustment, game seven, game eight, in the red zone on third down, we're able to fall back on that. And it's not something new for our guys. Philosophically, do you think there are X number of balls you have to hit or at least attempt from 10 to 20, from 20 to 30? Yeah, I talked about that the other day. Like, I'm not going to go, I'm not thinking and don't, I'm not doing that. Like, we're pro stall, not West Coast. The West Coast offense is predicated on five to eight yard routes, catching and running, just getting completions. Like, we have to find a way to throw the ball beyond 12 yards. Like, that's, we talked about how do we get people to back up off of us. Like, you have to push the ball down the field. It can't just be 30 plays or five yard passes in quick game. So, uh, we've done, had a huge emphasis this summer with the PRPs of just pushing the ball. Like, when, we, when they do player run seven on seven, it's not quick game. Like, we're making them throw the ball down the field. And uh, I think that that's something that I'm committed to, something that our staff's committed to. I think our receivers are fired up about it. Our tight ends are fired up about it. I know Luke and the quarterbacks are having a lot of fun with it, but uh, we, you do. You have to push the ball down the field. Is there, are you calling from the box or from the field? From the box. Is there something you can see from the box that the, the safeties, the linebackers, you can see them responding in a certain way that you know you've, you've reached your sweet spot? If, I, if, I, if, that, if I've got that safety, you know. Oh, yeah, I mean, hit. you'll throw like a certain outbreaking route and you'll, you may catch it, but you caught it, but. Why is that safety there? Like, how did he get there so quick? Oh, they must be ready for this move, this double move, or this corner is getting in the way. Are they ready for this concept? So I think it's easier to remove yourself emotionally when you get in the box and to be able to see just the broad, I call it HD. Like, I don't want to be up close. I can't see anything. If I back up, it's HD for me. You can start to feel the safeties, the corners, the depths, the coverage, the pressure. I think it's just, it's a huge advantage. But I think as you throw the ball, again, like you just you figure out like if you're throwing and catching, that's like if you're not throwing and catching or it's close, you find a counter move off of why you are not being successful with that route. Are you a certain number of scripted plays guy at the start of the game? Anything like that? Yes, uh, ten. 
we try to we try to get it to ten. And those were too deep. You get to ten, and I would say if twelve games a year. You strip ten. I would say ninety percent of the people get to six or seven before it starts to go into different situations. In a run game. How much do you mix in with that success with last year with things that you like to do or mix and match? Or obviously more of fit into your personal All of college football is like it's all I know we do still like we watched the NFL we still what they did we still what uh, college eight, college team A did well last year like you're just picking and choosing and you're trying to match up with what you feel like your skill sets are at those positions so whatever allows us to gain four yards we're going to do it uh, we're definitely not going to look at something they did last year and say well they did that last year we're not going to do it like we're definitely if it's a run that Marshawn and Kevin and those guys like then we definitely will, will keep it in play keep it active if there was a fan sitting home that wants to get on YouTube and try and kind of watch something that gives them the best guess of what you're trying to do what would you tell them to pull up uh, I mean, you'd have to watch LSU 2019. You'd have to watch uh, when I had PJ Walker at Temple in 2015. Uh, you'd have to watch a little bit of what we did with the Panthers last year. Uh, you'd have to watch a little bit of Oklahoma. I mean, you just have to go dibble and dabble around with all of it. But we're going to do some good stuff. You know, 